of hypothesis of equal means can be accepted. Strictly speaking, uh, we're, we're doing the analysis to infer results to the population. We should be saying mu's, not means. But many people do it. Don't get confused. Just accept that people use the terminology slightly inaccurate in that context. So conclusions. Smokers and non-smokers do not have equal brain sizes, at least with respect to the frontal lobes, that section that Brode et al. were looking at. And this is how you'd write it with a very, very simple statement. T degrees of freedom 34 equals 3.07. That's my calculated T, not my critical T. And P less than 0 0.05. Now, this is a very basic way of writing the result for a T test. If you want to learn how to write a proper result section for an independent sample t-test, I encourage you to check the video. In fact, the write-up is based on this example, so you'll be able to follow along on how to do, how to actually write the results for an independent t-test. That's a good, detailed way of doing it. Uh, now, something I write here that's important is that because this is based on a real study, I don't want you leaving here thinking something that's not true. You can't conclude that smoking causes brains to be smaller. And you might have heard exp the expression, correlation does not imply causation. I'm not a really big fan of this statement because it makes it, 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 Im uh, it implies that correlate, there's something about correlation that's different than other analyses. And the truth is, is that t-test does not imply causation e either. So correlation does not imply causation. t-test does not imply causation. We don't know. It's possible that people who, people who smoke had smaller brain sizes before they even decided to start smoking. And in fact, it might even be that smaller brain size that's, uh, that's causing them uh, to, to take up smoking. But it might, al might also cause them to take up a lot of other activities that other people with larger frontal lobes might not engage in. Now, this is only on averages. Some smokers had larger brains than non-smokers. And we'd want to get into issues of effect size uh, with an independent sample t-test like Cohen's D or Hedges G. Uh, and these are separate issues that I cover in other videos. Uh, the main point here is that correlation does not imply causation, while the t-test doesn't imply causation either. Now, I haven't talked about assumptions because usually f students find assumptions pretty boring and it gets, I find people get bogged down into it and you, by the time you get to the t-test, you're tired and you don't even want to know about it anymore. But I'll just mention for those who have made it this far, there are assumptions associated with the independent t-test. One of them is random sampling. And that just means, I'm only going to cover this very briefly. I, I w I'd like to treat assumptions separately in another video, but random sampling is, is an assumption. So each person in the population has an equal chance of being selected into the study. It, with Brody et al., that's probably not true. So that assumption is probably violated, but almost everybody violates that assumption, to be honest. Independence of observations, that just means that people are not influencing each other in terms of the dependent variable. and uh, Obviously, in the independent groups, uh, there are independent peop people. People in one group are smokers, and the other people are non-smokers. So obviously, they're different independent people. Uh, dependent variables measured on an interval ratio scale, although I mentioned people will use an ordinal scale. Normally distributed data. That's talking about skew and kurtosis. Now, again, this is not. In practice, this is more complicated than just looking at skew and testing it with a distribution. Uh, the independent uh, t-test is actually robust uh, to skew and kurtosis. And when you look at the write-up, I actually go into this a little more detail about how you don't have to be petrified about your distributions not being normal and actually doing an independent t-test. But strictly speaking, normally distributed data is what you assume and homogeneity of variance. So those variances that I calculated, which were a pain in the butt to calculate, we assume that the variances are, are equal. Now, they're not going to be exactly equal. It's within sampling fluctuations that they'll be equal, and we test that with tests like Fmax and Levine's F-test, which I haven't done. But uh, if you look at the SPSS video that I've done for this analysis, uh, I actually use exactly the same data. Uh, you can check me check out uh, me testing this assumption with Levine's F test. I get this question quite often, actually, with the independent t-test. 
And no, you don't need equal sample sizes. It works just fine uh, if you don't have equal sample sizes. I suppose there might